Okay, welcome everyone and thank you for joining. Let's go ahead and get it started. Good day everyone and welcome to the first Ally Robot Webinar session for 2022. Thank you for taking this time uh, to join us for a great presentation of the new features of Blackboard Ally and how it helps institutions to create accessible and inclusive environments for all the students. Before we get started, I wanted to go through some housekeeping notes. First of all, uh, participants are muted by default as a courtesy to the speakers. We want to make sure that we avoid some accidental background noise. <laughs> if you want to turn off uh, the sound of each uh, pop-up notification as people enter the session, please open the Collaborate panel on the bottom right corner of your screen. Click on the gear icon, select the notification settings, and then check the box for audio notification. Also, we are offering closed captioning today. For this, please open the Collaborate panel on the bottom right corner of your screen. Click on the gear icon, select the audio and video settings, and check the box for display closed captions. Additionally, we want to make this session as interactive as possible, so please feel free to post questions on the chat during the session, and one of our Blackboard team members will do their best to answer. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be posted in, on the community site and send it out to you by email after the session. By way of introduction, my name is Rosario Bruzon, Product Marketing Manager for Blackboard Ally. Joining me today on this session, um, I would like to present our main speaker today, Dan Lowry, Senior Director of Product Manager Management for Blackboard Ally, who is going to give us uh, great updates on our product roadmap. And also, I have a few of my colleagues uh, who will be assisting with uh, moderating the session for the next hour. And well, this is our agenda for today. We'll spend uh, some time covering the product vision of Ally. Dan is going to give us more details about how our roadmaps work here at Blackboard. And then we'll cover recently released uh, capabilities for Ally, take a look at what's coming next, uh, and then look at some of the work in progress and highlights a bit farther on the horizon. And then assuming we have time, we'll take some Q and A's. And finally, some great news and announcements we have for you today. Last bit of business, some of the items we cover today are subject to change, the way they look, the time in which they are released. So just be aware of that. And as always, we try our best uh, to inform you when those changes occur. Okay, we're going to have a great session today. So let's start talking about Blackboard Ally and how we work to make content uh, more accessible. And now I will go ahead and mute my Nick and I'll turn over to you then to continue with the presentation today. All right, thank you so much, Rose. Hello, everyone. So happy to see so many folks here today. So as Rose said, we have a really great roadmap session for you today. We'll cover some updates for Blackboard Ally for LMS or VLE. We'll talk about some enhancements for Blackboard Ally for web. That's our solution that focuses on web content. Um, Ally for LMS focuses on course content that you might have inside of your learning management system. So first, before we start with some of the roadmap, I really wanted to talk about a little bit about the vision behind Ally. You know, when, when we think about the vision behind Ally, it's really rooted in kind of five foundational pillars. These are the pillars that ground our product strategy. Think of these as, you know, our guiding principles, right? These are the things that inform, you know, what we build and likely what we're not going to build related to Ally. At the very center, uh, we have universal design. Um, and with Ally, we really aim to be a core part 
of the accessibility ecosystem at all institutions to promote universal design and to really make content more inclusive for every single student that needs it. Uh, the second is scalability, being able to take, you know, what are sometimes very complex tasks or problems and address them through reporting tools, automation, guidance that Ally provides, um, all the while leveraging the power of the cloud that Ally is built on. And the third is centered around engagement. Ally uses something called human-centered design, right? That's kind of the philosophy that we apply to Ally. So we try to make it as easy as possible, lowering that barrier to entry to use the tool to familiarize people with accessibility. Because for some people, it can be very daunting, especially if you're not familiar with accessibility or don't have a background, if you're just used to creating course content. So with Ally throughout the experience, we really encourage interaction inside of the platform and provide guidance, kind of that hand-holding, that step-by-step -step help uh, throughout the entire tool. And really, the end goal here is to improve student retention and success, right? That is imperative. That is really important. And finally, a focus on community. You know, this helps to drive our roadmap of priorities, helps us gather feedback um, to improve Ally, right? So we can better meet the needs of your instructors, teachers, professors, um, other faculty, and also students. And so this brings us to how the details of the roadmap are actually determined, right? How, how do we prioritize what we build for Ally? Um, when I think of roadmaps, they're, they're kind of these living, breathing, very complex things. They're, they constantly evolve because there are so many different um, you know, areas of input that are changing, right? Um, and it can kind of be broken down to two distinct parts. And the first part really is the information gathering. Um, so there are a lot of different sources of inputs that we take in that feed into the roadmap. So we have items like UX activities, that's user experience activities. That's where our design team does generative research. They'll do concept validation, usability testing on the current product, looking for areas that we can improve you know, workflows. Uh, we also look to our user group, right? We have a very active user group uh, for Ally that constantly provides feedback and gives us you know, the inspiration to build new features in the tool. Coupled together with things like market research, looking at data and trends of how people are using Ally, um, and also things like beta testing. Right? We just conducted a recent beta test for instructor feedback for WYSIWYG guidance um, earlier last year uh, towards November, December, that played a really critical role in some of the updates that you're going to be seeing today. And then once we get all of these inputs, the second part really is distilling all of them um, into things like problem statements and use cases. So we can kind of understand and assess and measure, you know, what sense of positive impact could each one of these, you know, updates or features make to an individual, to a student, to a classroom. And all of these get reviewed to make sure that they align to the product pillars that I had just talked about. That's kind of our gut check to make sure that we're on the right track. So those inputs and impacts, you know, we use them to prioritize the work and effectively create the product roadmap, right? That's the end result that we'll see today. And this is true for Ally, but it's also true for all solutions at Blackboard and Anthology. And finally, the next piece that's also critical to mention is timelines, right? This is important because we want to set realistic expectations about what we're building to help your institutions plan appropriately, right? So for each one of the features that we're going to be covering today, they're going to be bucketed or coistered in a few different time horizons. And generally speaking, you, we'll, we'll, we have three. So the first is, you know, in the one to three month window. This generally means we have a pretty good level of competence of when a feature is going to be coming out and we can provide some estimation on release dates, or we might have a feature or new capability actively being beta tested. Next, we have three to six months. That's where we have a good general idea of the feature. We might have some scope defined, but we're still kind of gathering feedback. Um, it'll be an active development depending on the feature size, but we might not yet have a specific date to share. And then in the six months plus, this is what we usually call our longer term roadmap, right? This is where you'll see items that might be a little bit more thematic in nature um, with, you know, a, a little bit less confidence than some of the other items. So we'll apply that structure to our roadmap presentation for today. So let us get to the roadmap. <laughs> 
we're first going to start off with some recently released features for Ally. Um, these are all available now. Uh, we're going to start off with two that are a little bit more technical in, in nature that are related to how Ally integrates to your learning management system or your VLE. And the first one is adding support for LTI 1.3. So LTI is the way that Ally integrates into your learning management system. This is the IMS standard that Ally and any third party tool that you might integrate into your VLE, um, this is the standard that is most commonly used. Um, so here we're extending support in addition to our current LTI 1.1 support that Ally has provided for quite some time. So what does this actually mean? Well, when you move to LTI 1.3, it doesn't actually materially change the functionality of Ally. So when a teacher or professor looks at a report, for example, none of that changes. It all looks and feels the same. Um, the same goes for instructor feedback and also alternative formats. So the way in which a student would generate or create an alternative format, all of those look and feel the same. For many institutions, the primary driver here really is because, one, they want to stay on the latest standards. And two, they're conscious of, you know, um, some retiring of uh, LTI version support that the IMS has announced. So the IMS is the governing body that supports LTI. They have announced that they will be retiring the standard, um, depreciating it in June of 2022. So while we ins uh, encourage institutions to upgrade, you know, we're, we're very conscious that every institution has a different kind of timetable in which, you know, they have a window to upgrade. Um, so once you plan on making that jump to LTI 1.3, it's not a very big jump, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we want to make sure we give your institutions ample runway and we can help you um, make that update. You know, our support team has done many, many of these and we can help you out. Um, if you go to our support site, you know, you put in a ticket we can help kind of walk you through the changes there. And so, Rose, thank you for putting the link in chat. Um, if you're looking for more details about LTI 1.3, we have a breakdown for each one of the learning management systems we support today. So that's available now. The next one is specific to Canvas. So if this is your LMS or VLE of choice, uh, we've now introduced support for developer keys. And this is just a little bit of a different integration method that allows um, Ally to, one, set, make setup a little bit easier. Um, but if you already use Ally, it gives you some more flexibility or granular control over the application API permission. So that means what information Ally can access, what information uh, Ally can modify, add, or be deleted. So if your institution uses Canvas and you're interested in using developer keys, follow that link that Rose has provided in chat. Next up, some new language support. So over the past few months, we've been gradually expanding the language support for Ally's alternative formats for both translated versions and audio alternative formats. So some of the new translated languages now include Irish, Marathi, Portuguese, and Punjabi. And for audio alternative formats, with our next release that's happening, in just a few hours, uh, we're going to be adding support or expanding support for English language um, from New Zealand, South Africa, Wales, and also adding Hindi support. So that'll be available for Ally for LMS and Ally for Web. Um, and we have a comprehensive listing of all the different languages that Ally supports today on our help site if you follow that link that Rose generously posted in chat. We've also expanded guidance for documents. So now when you have a Word document, a PowerPoint, or a PDF document, Ally will not only flag when a language has not been set, but also let you know um, when it's incorrect. Um, but the new thing here is that we provide you guidance. We give you the step-by-step -step kind of breakdown um, to understand what it actually means and how you actually fix the issue. Um, and when you've made the adjustments, Ally conveniently provides you a place to quickly drag and drop or browse to upload the new file. So it gets back into the learning management system. So that is available now. And recently we made some updates to the institution report. 
so as Ally has matured and grown over the years, you know, the use cases, but also the amount of data that many institutions have um, that this report represents, that's grown really, really big. Um, so if your institution has a lot of terms or months with data, this is going to be a very nice welcome addition. So here, what we've done is refresh some of the visualizations, in particular, the scoring trend diagram in the institution report. That's that first graph that you see at the very top. So we've improved it. So we've, we've improved readability, which makes it easier to distinguish between WYSIWYG, file, and overall accessibility scores. So those are the lines that you see. Uh, we've also introduced the ability to toggle on and off some of those scores. So if you want to focus on a particular type of content like a file, you can easily do that by just selecting or deselecting boxes in this case. We've also made some minor workflow tweaks and performance improvements when you export CSVs. So if you're an institution that has a very large data set, we've made that a little bit quicker for you when you export the CSVs. So that's available now. And I'll actually demo that in just a little bit. But next up, and this is probably <clears throat> the most exciting feature that we've produced over the past year. This is one of the biggest changes to Ally um, that we released just this past December. Uh, and that's instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. So Ally previously scored WYSIWYG content. You could view that from inside the reports. But here, what we're doing is we're taking the same ally that everyone knows and really improve upon it. It turns the way that ally functions from one where you're assessing accessibility for content, um, you know, kind of after the fact, after you create content into something that proactively aids you during the content creation process for HTML, for WYSIWYG content. So here we've extended allies scoring and guidance to WYSIWYG tools inside of the learning management system or the VLE. So if you have, let's say, a piece of HTML content, a discussion board, or if you have an item in Blackboard Learn, a page in Canvas, Ally will not only score it, but now it gives you guidance directly in the tool. So you have the editor right in front of you, and you have Ally guiding you to make accessibility updates or rem remediation. Um, and it's very similar to what we do for documents today. But the new really, really cool thing here that we've introduced, um, there are three things. One, live scoring. So as a content creator, as a teacher adds content, you'll see the live score move up and down based on how accessible the content is. And we also indicate to you where there are issues. We highlight them with that familiar red checkered border that Ally provides. It's a very similar construct to using you know, Microsoft Word where you see the red squiggly line when you might have misspelled the word. Um, very similar construct here that Ally applies when you're creating that content in the editor. The second thing that we've introduced is quick fix suggestions. So this is where Ally kind of does a smart analysis of the document and says, oh, you have some text contrast changes or problems where the background and then the text that's layered on top of it, that's unreadable. It might have, it might not meet the minimum contrast ratio. So Ally, what it'll do is suggest a color palette with the appropriate um, contrast ratio. So people can actually see the text on screen and it's much easier to read. So the third piece is batch remediation. So we'll be suggesting quick fixes and then we'll be identifying all the occurrences when something like text contrast occurs. And then we give you the option to remediate or to fix all of the occurrences. So we take this workflow that you know, might have taken you quite a bit of time um, to assess you know, all the instances where you're having text contrast issues, figure out you know, what's the background color, what's the foreground color, what's the minimum contrast ratio, and what do I need to do to update it? You know, a lot of times that's kind of highlighting, selecting, deleting, pasting, or at worst, modifying HTML much harder if you, you're not familiar with that. What Ally does is it takes that complex workflow and makes it to be something that you can fix within a couple of selections, right? Um, so this, these three things are what's brand new for instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. So this is available now for Blackboard original courses, for Canvas, for D2L, and for Moodle. We'll be updating support for Learn Ultra in the very, very near future. Um, but let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna switch over to a live demo to give you 
just a brief walkthrough of the tool. I'll show you how to enable it, and we'll show off some of the updated institution reports that we have. So let me switch my screen. All right, and I think everyone should be able to see my screen now. Um, so let me just get my window up, just one moment. All right. So here we're going to start off with taking a quick look of instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. Uh, today I'll be showing you how it functions inside of a Learn Original course. As I mentioned, this will be available for Ultra courses soon and is already available for all our other LMS or VLE in integrations. The first thing to note is I've already navigated to a course. I'm already taking a look at some of the content within my course. I have this intro to cells document that has already been created. And immediately I can see a few things. I can see some maybe questionable text contrast that might be going on where the text is dark, the background's dark. It's not quite readable. Um, if I scroll down, I can see that there's an image. I already see Ally's indicator telling me that there's a problem with the image. I'm guessing it doesn't have alternative text. And when I scroll down, I can also see some interesting white space or gray space in this case uh, that might indicate that there's something kind of weird going on. And then I can see some different headings. I can see a table. Maybe it has a table heading, maybe it doesn't. But at this point, I really don't have a good sense of how accessible the content is. So I'm going to select the drop down. I'll select edit. And the way that you get into this workflow here varies a little bit based on your learning management system. But the key to look for is the ally score indicator, right? In this case, I have an orange score indicator marked with a 41% rating. And when I hover over it, I can see a call to action that says click to improve or select to improve. This is what you want to look for. This gets you into the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG guidance. So I'll select it. And here I'm taken to a full screen mode where I not only have access to the full editor, but I have my content so I can edit it. So this takes the same experience that I was just in. But what it does is that it layers allies guidance at the very top and also on the right hand side. And this is also resizable. So if you have a very large screen, it flows well. If you have a smaller screen, it collapses nicely also. So at the very top, you'll notice that I have a, an issue. Um, I have two occurrences of it. I have text fragments with insufficient contrast. And you can see below, I, can, I see uh, two items here. I can cycle through them by selecting the down arrow or the up arrow. Just moves between the first occurrence and the second occurrence. And then beside that, I have this eye that allows me to toggle on and off the highlight. So if I want to hide the highlights, I'll select the eye. And at this point, I have the exact same editor, the exact same content that I had before I got into the Ally experience. So I can make changes without having Ally inform me. So I'll select the eye again just to get those highlights. If I look on the right-hand side, I can see the Ally score again, 41%. I have access to all of my issues if I select that. Ally breaks down all the various issues that I have related to this document. If I select it again, I get taken back to this particular issue. Um, again, Ally guides me every step of the way. So if I'm not familiar, if I don't know what insufficient contrast means or what impact it has to a student, I can select what this means. I get an understanding of what color contrast is. I get some useful links. If I select the right arrow, I get an understanding of why it's important to have sufficient contrast, right? Because it ensures legibility. It's essential for students that have visual impairments uh, or someone that might ha have a high quality device, right? You might have a low quality monitor with glare, right? That's, that's some of the reasons why it's important. So again, Ally here is encouraging learning, positive behavioral change uh, to those content creators. If I select the X, I get taken back. Now, important here is allies scoring everything live. So if I make a change in the editor, I'll select this text and I'll actually change the background color. I'll select white. Notice ally score indicator changed. It went from that 41 all the way to 55 because I've fixed it. 
Now I could go through every single example and do that, but that's tedious. Um, so let me revert that. Second new thing with Ally that's brand new here are the quick fix suggestions. So here Ally's looked behind the scenes and said, oh, I, I know that there are two occurrences of text contrast issues. Here is a color palette of accessible um, text and background color combinations. So here I can select uh, the color. We also tell you what the color is. In this case, it's just white. Then I have the option to apply it to all two occurrences. So if I select that checkbox, then I select apply. Again, take note of the ally score at the very top. I'll select apply. And just like that, Ally has updated all the occurrences for the text contrast. It will do this for a bunch of other issues. Again, the nice thing here is that Ally continues to guide you. So once I've remediated one issue, I then get other items that remain that I can resolve. So the other item here um, that I can see is images that, are, that contain a missing description. So I'll select that. From here, you can see I've I have a highlight of the image. Um, this is a really tricky one to provide alternative text to, right? Just because it's very complex, there's a lot of text on it. I'm just going to give a very basic alternative text description. I'll select Add. Now it's gone up all the way to 96%. I'll select the next one, Empty Headings. I can choose to remove a single occurrence or both occurrences. Notice how they're highlighted here. My suspicion was right. I knew there was something that was going on with that weird white space. I'll select to remove both empty headings. And then finally, I have one option, um, the headings uh, that do not begin at the first level. Some guidance is coming soon. But at this point, you know, I think I've done a really good job. I've done something that might take me 10 to 15 minutes, and I've completed it in just a matter of seconds with Ally's new quick fixes and batch remediation. So I'll select the X here. The other important part to remember is that we wanted to make this workflow integrated into your standard learning management system workflows. So you'll need to submit or save the content. We kind of wanted to give you that double confirmation just to make sure that you are well prepared, that you know exactly what you have changed as a part of this. So when I'm ready, I can select submit and that'll actually save the changes that I've made with Ally. So that's instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content inside of the LMS. This is new as of December. And if your institution has yet to enable it, let me actually show you how to do that. It's really, really easy. So let me select my next tab over. So I think it's important to remember that with any change of functionality of a tool, you know, especially one of this size, you know, we want to make sure that your institutions are well aware of the changes, right? Because we know that your instructors, that your staff, um, you know, a lot of times you have training, right? You have documentation, you have change management that you need to have occur at your institution. So by default, we've made this opt-in. So it means that it's disabled by default, right? Um, so your administrator will have to go in and make a change in order to enable. The, the good news here is that it's super, super easy to toggle this on. So let me show you what that looks like. So here I've already navigated to the Ally admin configuration. And how you get here will look a little bit different based on your LMS or VLE that you're using. But once you're in, this looks the exact same across all experiences. And if you don't see this or have access to this tool, your learning management system administrator should be able to assist you with getting access to it or can do it on your behalf. So from here, I'll select features. And this is the area where I have a variety of configuration options for all of Ally's tool. So new here again is the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. It is the one, two, three, fourth item from the top. I'll select to expand it. And so here I can see a screenshot on the left hand side that gives me a little visual preview. On the right hand side, I have a brief explanation of what it is in the various states. In this environment, it's already been enabled, but if it wasn't, all I would need to do is select enable on the bottom here. And then instructor feedback for WYSIWYG would be enabled or available in your courses. Another important item to mention here, we do have an option to keep your LMS or VLE's built-in accessibility checker if you have one, if one's already available. 
So all you would need to do is also select, also enable LMS built-in checker, and you'll have both Ally and your LMS's built-in checker. Normally, this is a little tool that sits somewhere inside of the uh, editor. But if your institution prefers a single consistent experience delivered through Ally, then there's no need to fuss. You don't have to do anything else. Leave this unselected or leave it unchecked. All you would need to do is select enable. And that's it. That is how you enable instructor feedback for WYSIWYG guidance. Cool. Third thing that I want to show you, since we're already in the administration panel, uh, some of the reporting improvements that we've brought to Ally. So I'm going to toggle over to my institution report here. So right off the bat, I've taken to an overview of um, the accessibility scores across all courses at this particular institution. Um, again, what's new here is that we've done a refresh of the graph. This is the first thing that you note right here. And this is a trend graph. This shows you how accessible each different type of content files, WYSIWYG, uh, is over a span of time. Here, I'm already looking at it by months. Um, but I can see terms, et cetera. So here you'll notice a couple of things. One, we've modified the colors. The overall score now has a solid black line. Um, WYSIWYG content has a dashed green line. And then files has you know, a little bit smaller dashed blue line. So it makes it a little bit easier to read to discern the various different uh, scores for each one of the respective document or content types. I also have the ability to deselect or only focus in on one. So if I'm only really interested in files, I can deselect that and now my graph will reflect that. If I re-enable them, if you had seen this report before, um, you know, uh, you would have seen a lot of indicators on here, which made it a little bit difficult to kind of assess the trend and all the various lines and how they relate to one another. So here we've decluttered it. So we've removed some of the icons from the graph to improve the differentiation here, improve the readability. So these are some small changes, but they're meaningful. Um, and in the future, we're going to be looking to explore some of the other visualization enhancements, like the pie charts below, and giving some improvements to consistency of color and some better visual treatment so you can differentiate between um, the various scores there. All right, so that concludes the demo portion. Let me jump back to the slides, and then we can take a look at what's coming next for Ally. Give me a moment. All right, should be loading just one moment. All right, so what I just demoed there, think of that as the first iteration of instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. Um, next up, we actually have quite a few improvements that are going to be coming over the next few months. Um, at the very top, we're going to be adding support for Learn Ultra courses. So today we already support Learn Original courses like what I just demoed, um, but we'll be adding support to Ultra documents. Um, so you'll have a very similar experience to what I just demoed. We're also going to be adding the accessibility score gauge when you're viewing content. So today you have to go in and you have to be editing the content before that gauge is visible. We want to improve the visibility, make it a little bit easier to access, um, just like you're used to today for images. So we'll be making an improvement there. We're also going to be working on better integrating instructor feedback for WYSIWYG into reporting. So when you're inside of the course accessibility report, for example, you'll be able to quickly access instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. And we're in the process of adding things like additional quick fixes, like links with missing text, images with redundant text, um, but also empty incorrect headers. Next up, if your institution uses, um, if your LMS of choice is Brightspace provided by D2L, we've been working with our colleagues at D2L to extend some of allies capabilities, including alternative formats um, into the new learner experience. And this is just a new view that D2L has provided for students to consume content. So we'll be adding Ally support there very, very soon. 
except we have some updates that are a little bit longer or farther down on our roadmap in the next three to six months. As I mentioned, you know, our community provides us a lot of great feedback, you know, so we have a lot of improvements coming for instructor feedback here, um, some of which I already mentioned, but here the important ones are extending support, further extending support for editors inside of D2L and Moodle. For D2L, we're going to be expanding to support more tools and content, including web pages. And for Moodle, we're going to be looking to add support to the Addo editor. Today, we already support Tiny MCE. So those are two enhancements that we have planned for editors for D2L and Moodle. And for 2022, one of the big areas of focus for us, we call these our big rocks, is we're going to be extending allies scoring and guidance to a broader set of multimedia. You know, today we support documents, we support WYSIWYG content, and we do support some um, content like YouTube, for example. Um, but here we're going to be expanding our support for video. And this is really a response from um, a lot of the feedback that we've heard from institutions from our community just about the massive increase in online video consumption that's happened over the past few years, especially because of the pandemic. So whether it's video that's being used through your Blackboard Collaborate tool, Collaborate, the software we're using today to engage, um, but also from third party video streaming services or management providers, Ally is going to look to broaden its scanning, reporting, and guidance for video that's stored inside of the LMS, but also outside of the LMS. So this includes assessing, you know, if a video has captions, are they auto captioned? Were they generated by a human being? Is there a transcript associated with this video? Does this video potentially contain seizure inducing segments that might be problematic for some people? We do this today already for GIFs or GIFs, those images. So those are a few of the checks that we're going to be extending for video. Um, so all of this will be added to the institution and course reports, uh, as well as providing feedback and guidance to content creators, including the ability to do things like manually add captions to videos. So this is going to be our first batch of video related work that we're going to be looking to include, but there's a whole lot more that we're going to be wanting to do, including looking at options for auto caption. Next, some longer term highlights to talk through. And this first one is very, very interesting because it's a very complex one that I know many institutions deal with today. And this is one that we've heard a tremendous amount of feedback and interest on, and it's better improving STEM content in particular mathematical equations. Math can be you know, one of the most challenging areas in education to create accessible materials, especially alternative formats. Um, when it's in the context of a document, let's say a PDF, it can be really complicated. Um, you might have a combination of actual text plus an image, um, or maybe it's purely a scanned image, right? That's something that happens very frequently. And even if you take a look at the equation that's on the screen here, you, you might have the W and the I and the J, you know, the, they might be encoded in one way on the left-hand side, uh, but then everything on the right-hand side might be a graphic, right? So being able to differentiate between the two, there are a lot of different use cases here. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is all focused on alternative formats. Um, so we're going to be starting small. So first, we're going to be improving support for allies uh, scanning of mathematical equations in Word and PowerPoint documents. So that means taking a look at that mathematical equation, transposing it into something that Ally can then generate alternative formats from. And from there, we'll be looking to extend to WYSIWYG content and finally PDFs. And again, the end result here is Ally having the ability to generate an alternative format for the content that includes mathematical equations. So that's something on our longer term roadmap that we're currently researching. We also have some updates planned to grow our accessibility checklist. Um, with these items in particular, um, we're going to be focusing on mobility, so usage on a mobile device, for example. So things like orientation, which notes if your device is in landscape or portrait orientation, and reflowing of content, also known as responsive design. 
as well as things like text spacing. So this includes line height, paragraph spacing, uh, letter and word spacing. Sometimes you can get content that overlaps and it's you know kind of unreadable. So we'll be expanding our checks there for Alan. And finally, to wrap the roadmap, just a few additional items to mention here uh, for Ally. Uh, first, enhancing CSV exports to include some more details, some more data points as a part of those exported uh, reports. Uh, we're going to be looking to improve and in some cases provide some more automated fixes for items like PDFs that might not have a title or language set or associated with them yet. You kind of got a glimpse of what that looks like today for instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. We'll look to apply a very similar construct here um, when it comes to documents. We're also looking to improve the way that alternative text or alt text, image descriptions, the way that they're managed and applied for images in different LMS tools. Today, there's some limitations with some of the LMSs that create, frankly, an unideal workflow, especially when it comes to copying or rolling over courses. This is a project that's already kicked off. And for Outlay for Web, we're going to be looking to uh, introduce domain scoring so you can see the evolution and trend of accessibility scores for your entire website, but also subdomains, and then introducing additional guidance workflows. We have quite a bit of additional guidance workflows for both Ally for Web and Ally for LMS that are currently in development. All right, so that concludes the roadmap portion of the webinar today, but we do have quite a bit of time set aside for Q&A. Uh, so Rosen team, is there anything that caught your eye uh, that we want to go verbal with here related to questions that might have been asked that haven't been answered? Well, then a few questions on the chat, but there is one that says we are having issues with uh, the HTML files, not having enough guidance to the issues encountered as most issues comes back saying guidance coming soon. Are there plans to improve this? Well, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> So for HTML files, there are some guidance improvements that are going to be coming. Uh, we don't have a specific date today for them, um, but I will say that for HTML, um, looking back at the demo, uh, if you have those HTML files and they're integrated into the editor, so you've uh, had the HTML put in the editor, a lot of that guidance is now available as of that December release as part of instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. When it comes to actual HTML files that are just uploaded as a file, they're not introduced in the editor, there are some uh, guidance items that would be coming in the future. Excuse me. Great question. Thank you. Gordon, I see you have a question related to uh, LTI 1.3. Uh, you know, we encourage institutions to move to LTI 1.3 when you're comfortable. We're not removing support for LTI 1.1. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward process. It doesn't take a lot of time. If you're curious or interested, I would point you back to the documentation um, on our help site uh, specific to your LMS. Take a look at it review it. If you have questions, reach out to our support team. They can make that change fairly quickly. You don't lose any data with Ally. None of the tools or functionality changes. You can actually have them both running simultaneously. Try them out uh, before you deactivate or turn off the LTI 1.1 integration. So we have a couple of options there to support you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Any other questions, Rose, that we saw? No, Dan. We don't have any more questions now. All right, wonderful. So I'm going to stick around for uh, the end of the session, but I'm going to turn it over to Rose to talk through just a few announcements. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for that great presentation uh, you had for us today. Um, and a few quick items uh, to mention, an announcement to make especially related to upcoming events. Coming up this year, we have our Anthology Together event. If you haven't been to uh, BB World before, this is the new institutional... Oh, sorry, hold on a second, something happened here. My 
okay? <laughs> okay, if you haven't been um, to Blackboard uh, World before, this is the new institutional client event uh, where we're getting together, everyone from higher education to uh, K-12 in the U.S., across the globe, together in Orlando, Florida this year. Uh, this is being held at, Black, at Walt Disney World Strand and Dolphin Resort, as you can see on this slide. And one of the things that we are doing this year, and we actually did something uh, similar last year, was having a dedicated accessibility and inclusive access track. And as part of that, we're looking for people to present. So if you are interested in presenting, tell your story and give insights or have uh, some accessibility topic you would like to share, for example, uh, how your institution is adopting a lie, rather accessibility and inclusive practices. Submissions are open. Call for proposals is open. So we invite the speakers to share their knowledge, uh, best practices, lessons, lessons learned, and tips and tricks with all colleagues. I'll put a link in, a link in the chat for everyone as well. There it is. Also, Fix Your Content Day is back. This year, we'll be holding another, another Fix Your Content uh, Day on the Global Accessibility Awareness Day, which is going to be held on May 19th. Let's remember that the purpose of the Global Accessibility Awareness Day is to get everyone talking, thinking, and learning about digital access and inclusion. And the Fix Your Content Day is a 24-hour drive committed to creating accessible and more inclusive digital learning uh, content across classrooms and institutions globally. On Fix Your Content Day, we aim to fix as many course files as possible uh, through Blackboard Ally. So you will be receiving more information about this event uh, in the next weeks. And we're looking forward to your participation at this event. Last thing I wanted to mention was related to the release announcement of uh, the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. And well, Dan gave us a great demo about the WYSIWYG feedback today, but we also created a brief three minute uh, walkthrough video that you can access by going to the link that I'm going to put on the chat right here. You can socialize this video at your institution if you haven't uh, enabled it yet. This is a good preparation for it, so check it out. It is also on YouTube and it's captioned too. And we also have a new blog post with the main benefits of the WYSIWYG feedback and how it has helped instructors and institutions to go from, proact from reactive to proactive content creation. So with that, we will wrap up this session. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and for your participation. Recordings will be emailed to all registrants and also uh, will be posted on the community side. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Ally team for any questions, any doubts. We'll be, we will be more than happy to help. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.